We are live. We made it. We are here. How's it going, Will? Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing, doing fantastic. Right. I'm realizing I need to change my I need to change my my headline. This I did a Kubernetes stream yesterday. Um and uh I have done a whole bunch of Kubernetes related stuff, but I'd never actually played around with Kubernetes before. So yesterday was my my exploration into the world of of DevOps. Um successful how are you i'm all right i'm uh i'm sore i'm in pain uh -oh. back hurts neck hurts oh, no what happened everything hurts old age time i don't know months pass by months pass by somebody said to me uh recently or maybe i saw a meme about it about like that like 35 like 34 35 is where like your body just decides I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. And I, I've, I've felt that personally in so many ways. Well, uh, I will be 35 in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, that's, so you've, you're in the window. I'm halfway there. That's... <laughs> um, it's been, it's been a bit. I, I realized like when I knew that we had this booked and I was like, it's crazy that uh, I have been around the world in in the time between the last time that we did our stream and this stream um what have you been up to over these past number of weeks well anything anything interesting or exciting um nothing really exciting i have completed a large portion of the docs that i was working on uh getting the descriptions re-described <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh i guess updating our, our the presentation like how they look so that they're easier to use as well as uh, making sure that everything is linked so that we can share things. And when I mean everything, I mean stuff like properties, method names, event names, uh, the parameters to those uh, particular functions maybe, or the callbacks that they may they may give you. Uh, so that if someone's having a asking a question or if I'm trying to explain something, I can link directly to the thing. And I think that gives a lot of uh, context so that I'm not having to explain a lot of that stuff you know over and over and over again it's like oh yeah just here here you go here are these four things if you read these four things maybe hopefully it'll get you there i like that but yeah unfortunately nothing interesting or entertaining it's just been here just here at work just doing work I don't know. There's, I feel like there's, uh, there's something, there's something to be said about just doing docs and it not being the funnest thing, but it needs to be done. It needs to be updated. Yeah. Yeah. There were th yeah. I've said all those things and I, I think there are a lot of things to say. <laughs> so I'm just doing it now. I'm just like, uh, yeah, one day they'll be done. Hopefully <laughs> at least the part, the part that I'm working on now, the developer reference, I'm trying to scope it down to that. So like, you know, one day it'll be to a point where I'm happy or at least, or at least where I accept it, you know, yes. I live with it. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I, um, I do also, I have to say there's something to be said for just quietly sitting at your computer and working on things. Like I, I feel like there's le much less danger of like contracting, although I guess you injured your back and stuff. So it's as dangerous as traveling and getting sick. Um, well, I still have to interact with people. That's, the, that's so that's true. the thing that it, so if I didn't have to interact with people, a lot of the stuff could go by much quicker, but I'm sure you all understand where, uh, the type of work that we do is so, it's so varied or multidisciplinary that, you know, it's a mix of deep work type stuff, but it's also a mix of planning, but, you know, you can't really get work done when you're in the middle of planning, nope. uh, but you also can't really get deep work if you're also having to, uh, you know, meet with people or, or like facilitate other things. It's, it's a lot of different putting on different hats. And to do that is is difficult. <laughs> I'll say that. That's a very that's a very good way to put it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what is all your stuff out then? Now, like, are you like now that you are where you are on the project? Like, is, is does that mean you get to not be working on documentation? Oh soon? no 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 no. Uh, so initially, I thought I was going to be able to cover 
three of our notifi uh, or, I'm sorry, of our uh, API areas. Yeah. Uh, notifications. I think there are like five or six APIs under there. Uh, users and subscriptions, which I think combined for like eight or nine. Uh, I was I thought I was going to be able to get all of those. Uh, turned out I can only get one of the APIs. Oh, really? In in one of the groups. So uh, just to create notification, but that's also our most complicated API. So most of the other APIs are significantly easier. So just by doing this API, I'm probably like I'm, I've probably completed maybe sixty percent of the API in in total. What's the API that you're working on? Uh, it, it's called Create Notification. It's the unified API that we have uh, that enables you to create a message. We're getting we're getting our naming right over time, but like it enables you to create a message and not really have to worry about. Well, I guess you do have to worry about. It. You can send an SMS, a text message, a and that message. Technically, you can't a push in an email. Yeah, I think it unifies those three different channels. It allows you to just have one endpoint. I'm thinking is instead of instead of having to like have these different your all your data in these different systems, like wherever your text messages live, it's already in one signal. You can easily send it so long as it's configured. Same thing for your email. I think a lot of times a lot of people have data spread across different systems. Yeah. They may want to use it for personalization in some other system. And that's kind of what we're doing. Cool. I like it. Yeah, we um this uh this world of of really being in a place where you are recognizing the changes that need to be made based on lots of experience is great, but there's always more changes that are coming too, right? Like every time you finish a change, there's like, oh, I now I recognize that we need to update this as well. See, this so is what I've learned is that when you work, like what you what you'll find is that work brings more work. Like it, it just, it always is like, as you accomplish things and as you complete things, there's just more things that you find out that need to be done and accomplished. Yeah. Well, what's the, there's, um, I can't remember what the name of this, uh, is it, a, I don't know if it's a thought experiment or something like that, but it says that, um, like if you expand the number of people in the same workspace or whatever needs to be done, you will always find work for those people. Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever heard this before? So like one person could do the job really well, but if you add two people, they'll still be able to fill their day with work to do. They'll always find more stuff to do. And you add like another person, they'll all always be able to find more work. This I, I've never heard that. I can kind of see why someone would say that, but Obviously, they said this before the DMV. <laughs> you ain't wrong there. I love that also the DMV just carries over anywhere you go in the world. Everybody has a DMV and they'll call it something totally different. But we all know. We all know that experience. It's just dealing with the government in, in uh -huh. general. It's not like I think that's the reason why most people get it because that's the way. I mean, most people will interact with the government, at least with that way. Where like they're forced to have to like see how bureaucratic and how shitty it can be. It's, it's so uh, true. It's so true. Um, so if you are just tuning in, if you're here watching this stream, we got folks coming in now. Uh, welcome. I'm Andrew. This is Will. Hello. Uh, we're we're doing some uh pairing today. We're doing some code. I, I like my portman or is it is it po not portmanteau? What do you call it when you combine two words? We're doing a collaboration, code collaboration. Um, yeah, so I work as a developer advocate at DevCycle. Uh, my good friend Will works as a developer advocate at OneSignal. Um, and we've been doing these streams for, it's been a while now. It's been like coming up on six months at least. Well, these streams, this is the first, no, the second. Of That's these true. Streams. That's true. Which so, we haven't figured out what it is yet, but we we kind of know. We kind of know. We're we gonna have, get there. We have a clue. <laughs> we have a name now, right? We have the name. We have the concept is here. We had an idea after the last stream. We have a color palette now. We're like in the right place. All of the pieces are fitting together. Um, 
we'll get there. We'll get there today. And I will say, uh, so I don't always, when I, when I post about these, um, when I post about these streams, I don't always get a huge amount of love and people don't always repost them, but we got a like, a lot of likes on this post. A lot of people, uh, like the, the framework that we're looking at playing around with. Um, I still think, uh, that the, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, PHP is like this, this unpopular programming language that's been able to just like become cool behind the scenes while everybody else thought JavaScript was, was the, the, the bell of the ball. And PHP was just taking off their glasses and waving their hair. Um, but yeah, yeah. So we got some love. I think it's going to be a good stream. I think we're building something that people care about is that I think what it's going to be fun. Maybe we're going to be building something that people care about. I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah, we'll see. If anything, we'll have content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will have content, and that is what this game is about. Um, yeah, so if you didn't tune into our last stream, uh, you can find it in a lot of different places. But the TLDR here is... Will and I did these streams last year where we kind of just played around with each other's technologies and it was fun and cool and we loved it and it was great. We got to hang out, but we were like, we should do something cool this time around. We should do something different um, and we should maybe contribute to something. And we had a bunch of ideas in our last stream together. And then uh, I don't think it took a lot of convincing, but we were going to, we were thinking about a linear project and some desktop projects. And I was like, oh, I love this little unknown PHP micro framework that I think needs a lot of love. And I feel like if we could contribute to something like that, it would be useful to the community. I feel like in all of these world of frameworks, um, specific ones get all the love and others get forgotten about. And like these open source communities are so cool and doing so many valuable things, but if they don't find the right fit in the right space they just kind of get they they can fade into nothingness so if we can show a little love to 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 one of these frameworks that's doing something cool i i think there's something fun there you said something interesting i'm sorry i can't No, what did i say what did i say go ahead we play with each other's technology <laughs> you're, you're welcome uh please don't clip that uh youtube Twitch. you know you know how this works like you say don't do it and people do yeah that's exactly it listen also, if you tell people to do it they also do like. yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's really no winning here um i'm okay with that i'm i i feel as though uh if i'm gonna become a meme it might as well be something uh, for something as innocuous as innocuous as that honestly like i mean maybe uh, maybe maybe that's the rite of passage maybe to internet stardom is you you must first become a meme or you have to become a meme at some point i think so i at hope so i don't One know day. if i hope so like <laughs> i hope not but but like i mean yeah Right. I've been I've been trying for years. I do a lot of streams, and I'm shocked that I haven't. I guess I don't have the viewership for people to turn me into me. Um, maybe one day. Yeah, yeah, someday. someday. All right. Uh, well, I guess you already. I mean, you already do PHP stuff, so you already said. So I think for today we'll be doing stuff on my machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so if if yeah, we so. can get me to do some PHP stuff, and I want to have a. Make sure I give you a little bit of uh, a bar. You know, uh, I have not touched PHP since 2006. So I don't know much. <laughs> no, just keep that in mind. I, I just want to make sure, you know, the bar is set low so that you're not like, all right, how come he's struggling? I don't know. I right. need it. I know that there's something. Is there some called Composer? Is that a PHP thing? It is. It is a PHP okay, thing. Okay. I, I yeah. know about that then. Like... <laughs> Like I only half knew, but I know about that now. I know that. I so, heard that y'all have classes now. Or we no? Do. Yeah, we do. We have oh, classes. You have classes. Too. Okay. Do you yeah. have types? Do you yeah, have types. Uh, now? We do. Yeah. Yeah. You can do types in PHP. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I would. Here's the thing, right? Is like PHP, and I will admit this. People talked about PHP for a long time, and they said PHP is garbage. And I would say garbage is a strong term, but I think it was missing a lot of important things because. It was built, and if you don't know this internet and you're watching, like PHP doesn't stand for some like 
co- like JavaScript, everybody's like, oh, it's a like coffee and script. Oh, I get script. PHP stands for a personal homepage. The entire purpose of PHP was because the creator wanted a simple way to create um, more dynamic web pages that weren't just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So he created PHP for personal homepages. Um, and so a lot of thought wasn't put into building like complex web applications. It was like, I want a great way to build out web pages. And that was where PHP was born. So it struggled a long time, but like it's it's grown, it's grown. So I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. I think like the last, what's 2006? It's like 20, it's not, eight, it's not eight, 20. 18 years ago, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. 18 years ago. So. Um, I think can, I think you're. Can you believe that? Like that's the. I know. <laughs> Eighteen. <laughs> I know. Listen, I still I still see these memes where people are talking about people being. Uh, it's like people being born in the '90s that are worried about people being born in the 2000s, and I'm like, there's an eight. It's like not one nine eight in my in my birthday year, and so I uh, when the '90s kids became 20 years old, I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. And when the 2000s kids, now there's like kids that are born in the 2010s that are like going into high school. And that blows I mean, my mind. I mean, I, oh, maybe you haven't worked. There's, they're even coming into the workforce now. Mm. I don't know if you've, <laughs> if you've noticed. I, have, I, I learn things all the time. They're here. They're here. They're here. There's the start of a horror movie. Um, <laughs> combine that one with a nope. <laughs> Oh, and I hope you excuse me. I am. I picked up this nasty, nasty chest cold while I was uh, I was saying before um, before we came on the stream. Uh, I was on a train, and there was somebody that was uh, not not showing great train etiquette, um, and uh, both me and my colleague got sick. But I'm through it. But my partner. She is very much not through it. She is in the throes of it right now. So I am sleeping on the couch because I got her sick. And I feel like that is an appropriate place for me to be because I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Oh, my God. It is pretty rough. Pretty rough. Well, hopefully that couch is comfortable. Yeah, it, my, it, my it's, a, it's a it's a futon. It's a futon. Uh, okay. So, okay. so we're okay. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, you might need to reset. We'll see if this works, but reset. you might end up needing to reset to share your screen. It depends on whether you uh, have Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Let's see. We'll see. It might work. We've done stuff on here before, so you might be fine. Oh, wait, what? All right, so I don't know which screen is which, but it won't, it won't show up immediately. I'll I'll have to put it on, so you're good to just okay. share whichever one. I'll just press enter. Yep, got the mountains up. All right. Uh, well, no, 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 they all have mountains. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what? All right, hold on. Wait. Let me open something and tell me if you can see it. You first close superhuman. Can you see this text editor? Yeah. Okay. All right. This is the right screen. Are we good? All right. I'll pull it up. All right. And I got to do an edit to this background. All right. Uh, how do you, do we want to, is that? Oh, you're, you're fine with the background. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just wondering, do we want to go bigger with our text? Do we want to go this or do we want, yeah. Do we want to go this or do we want to go this? uh i will leave it up to you I, I i see a very tiny preview of this entire thing oh fair enough all right yeah, we'll just leave, I'll, I'll just i'll just leave it there i think that's fine we want to have mostly mostly code and stuff on the screen so i think we're good okay <clears throat> yeah there i figured there were going to be some things outside of like i was going to have to use multiple tools yeah uh so yeah yeah. So while Will's getting this set up, uh, I might actually do a screen share as well and then jump over. So if you're interested uh, in what, is this the right window? Yes. Uh, if you're interested in what we're looking at today, so Leaf PHP um, is the, uh, it's a PHP micro framework uh, that, um, 
Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's, so it's a PHP micro framework that um, uh, aims to sort of like uh, be as minimal as possible to kind of get you started with building out kind of APIs or, or web applications. So uh, yeah, I think this will be a, a fun way to kind of contribute to, to that project. So I just, I just wanted to kind of provide that context there, but then let's get your screen back up there. That's the more important one. All right, I've hidden things. All right, cool. Uh, so, what's the first thing? Where where should we start? Head to the first thing. I think doing? let's head to the docs. Which docs? Uh, leave PHP docs. Okay, so we're we'll gonna leave PHP. Maybe, maybe one maybe. day. All right. Hopefully, you see it now. All right. So we're going to leaf. PHP, and I'll make this slightly larger. And what guide tutorial here? Really yeah, here? yeah I think so. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now what? All right, installation guide. Yeah, it's probably our best place to start. Oh, look at that. It says download through Composer, but it recommends using the CLI. I mean, it. I feel like, do you need the CLI? Yeah, you need the CLI to. <laughs> you need a, you need Composer set up to get the CLI though, so you might as well just use Composer. Um, yeah. So I Can think. Can I install Composer using Homebrew? Should be able to. Yeah. I've never understood why Homebrew is incredibly slow it's never sped up it seems like no matter how fast my computer gets it never speeds up <laughs> yeah true that i think it was this slow even when i was in college like back in like 2008 just waiting on things <laughs> oh did you upgrade did i see something that you upgraded your your rig uh May, I don't know. What do you mean? Have have you upgraded like your what you're running at home right now since we last talked? No, I'm, I still have the same Mac Studio. Yeah. Uh, I have a new keyboard. Maybe that. Maybe that's um, what it is. I have two new keyboards actually, and I did have a new camera. Well, it's not really a new camera. I put my camera on my desk for a, a few streams just to see what it was like. Yeah. But I don't think I've done anything else. No, I can't think of anything. Are you looking for something new right now, though? Like, are you you're looking to upgrade, right? Uh, I was I was thinking about getting the M3, That's uh, nice. but I think I'm going to wait because I've heard I saw a rumor that the M4 is going to have uh, more focus on machine learning work. work okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, oh, I kind of want that. So I'm like, I'll wait, and um. I think I want to see what they're going to do with the Ultra. Uh, they changed the dial a little bit, uh, the actual silicon. So there's okay. no more of that interconnect that used to be on the M Max or the M1 Maxes mm. and M2 Max. Uh, it's not on the M3 Max. So I think that they're going to try to further differentiate the Ultra line from the other ones, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so the lat latest rumor I heard was the new Ultra won't have any efficiency cores, which like, like it makes a lot of sense because I'm on a, it's a desktop. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care about efficiency. I need myself done fast. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Although I wonder how well this multi line is going to work for them. I have a feeling like th that they're because they keep um, Apple has this way right of like extending their lines to go like mini and pro and s and like all these other things and then contracting again afterwards and like reducing the number of lines that they offer and the differentiation between them so i wonder i wonder if this kind of differentiation is going to be able to keep up well i think with the ultra like they don't really have a choice this is the only desk that's true offering, that's right? true you're not so. wrong um <laughs> And I've, they've already done it uh, between the the pro and the max, where you know some people looked at it as like a downgrade because they get less, uh, I guess, less cores, even though they're faster. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think a lot of people are just upset. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. That 
that uh, I don't know that I guess Apple won't lower prices. I don't know, but I'm excited. To, uh, I want Thunderbolt Five. That I'm I'm looking forward to that. What kind of a speed difference is that going to make, though? Do you really double. think is that is that what no, it really is? Double, yeah. So it's asymmet it's asymmetric too. So it's eighty uh, bidirectional or up to a hundred. I think it's a hundred. It may be a hundred and twenty. It's either a hundred or one hundred and twenty. Uh, one way. So it's significantly faster, and uh, it, it allows more power to be transmitted over the over the wire as well. So. It should. Be, I, I think it supports 8K, uh, 60 hertz refresh, or maybe something even higher than that. I just need it for like. I just want Pro Motion on a 6K monitor because I have the Pro XDR and I want Pro Motion on it. So I'm just like, currently Thunderbolt 4 it doesn't have the bandwidth to support that, but Thunderbolt 5 will, and I doubt that Thunderbolt 5 is going to make it on the M3 Ultra, even though you can get Thunderbolt 5 today technically like later this year look at that we're still going <laughs> anyone who wants to talk down on on the javascript ecosystem i present homebrew which is built on uh, ruby I think it's updating all of my uh, tools. By the way, uh, you may be muted or I can't hear you. No, I was definitely muted because I was uh, coughing. Okay. Um, welcome, welcome to the, I, I can tell you're not a PHP developer because all it's all, it's installing a bunch of um, PHP dependencies as well. Like Imagic is PHP, um, Live Draw. It's weird actually that it requires Imagic, but. No, no, I, I think what it's doing is it's upgrading all of my, I think when you do this, it updates all of your current stuff before it does the actual install. Yeah. So I use Image Magic because. Oh, you use it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I use it. Yeah. Oh, is it? It's different. Image Magic is an actual thing. Image. Yeah, Image Magic is a is a command line utility. It's a it's a CLI program. Yeah. Okay. This is what I'm thinking. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you use it to like create digital images, right? Uh, I use it for the filters to do it uh, to do everything programmatically, so I can do all my resizing and all that kind of stuff. On what? Like locally, like in really, here. yeah, yeah. So you can uh, I can just do like magic, something like that. I think it's magic. Yeah. So I just do this. I can give it an image, and then I can give it like commands or options or whatever. Huh. And yeah, so that's actually how I convert. Uh, like do all of my optimization for screenshots is I'll once I'm done I'll go in and do it here. Interesting. Yeah, I do. Um, I use a magic for all of the. I generate um, every time a user saves their profile on Edge Links, it saves like a new. Um, uh, what is it called? Like the Twitter card image, like the. Oh my god. Anyways, and and use it. It's it's amazing, but I didn't realize it had a command line. That's kind of spectacular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh yeah, that's how I, all the other folks are actually using it. There's probably just shelling out to that program. Uh that's what I would do. In fact, <laughs> that's what I plan to do. <clears throat> Goodness gracious. There we go. It's going. All the stuff. You got a lot of stuff installed through Homebrew. I dig it. I actually wish that um and i know windows has got chocolatey um as a package manager but i kind of wish they would just port homebrew over to like over to windows or why why, <laughs> why? It's, it's yeah, so i feel like i should just port myself over to a mac device that's really what i should do oh oh for that oh, okay well <laughs> so I, i'm sure you know this for for homebrew what you could do is you can give it a list or a file of all of your things and it'll go off and install it, which means that you can basically just do a list of all your packages and dump that to a file. Oh, okay. uh, a lot of other package managers may also do the same thing hmm. where you can give it, because I I think Yum and, and APT, like app Git, it did that. Um, so I, I'm assuming that most package managers, they kind of do that, that, they have that same pattern. They do, but... <laughs> It's also the packages that they actually will allow you to install. Like the so, so 
Windows, the one major package manager that they've put out in the past few years is, is called Chocolatey. Um, and just the number of packages that are maintained that you can install through it are just like fairly limited. So Homebrew, I just find like has a really good representation of applications that are out there. Like if you're not releasing something that can be installed through Homebrew, it's kind of an odd um, an odd choice for you as a piece of as a piece of software that somebody might be installing on a Mac device or Linux device, I guess as well. Or wait, is Homebrew Homebrew is only Mac, right? Yeah, I think with the problem <laughs> that you're describing is one of like people actually publishing their mm -hmm. software to yes homebrew. yes that's exactly uh, what so I mean. it's more of a people choose to yes and it also could be i mean it's easier because it, it's only mac so the folks who are publishing to homebrew have some like reasonable uh expectation of what device their users are i guess what who are going to be using their software whereas yeah. windows like it's all it's oh my gosh like you don't know anything yeah, anything. It's, it's so hard to like I <clears throat> there's a development tool in the PHP space called Laravel Herd that just came out and it's a uh, start on Mac and there's a big PHP Windows development community. And so um, there's this huge push um, to bring it over to Windows. And um, I don't know how long it's going to survive. I don't know if I'll even use it. They've locked down some things like uh, they've locked down the ability to use MySQL through it like to host a little mysql instance um anyways but but you're it's exactly this reason right it's like i can only imagine the number of uh issues are gonna have come in they're like i'm running windows on my like i don't know refrigerator uh why can't i open this application and like you would just never face that in the in the windows ecosystem or in the mac ecosystem <laughs> all right look at that is it done uh, finally, <laughs> we, got it. we yes, did it. We're done. Uh, awesome. All right. So step one complete. We got composer installed. Actually, this is your major thing. Cause I am pretty sure PHP is a, um, is a dependency of composer. So you should, wait, do you PHP have, did, is a dependency of composer. Do PHP dash V and see if it shows up on your device. It should. This is a Mac. Uh, all all Unix systems sit with PHP. Do they really? Yeah, okay. that's actually okay. one of the reasons why I think people hate it. Like people hate languages that ship on their systems. Python, Perl, uh, Ruby, uh, PHP, Bash. People okay. love to hate. See, people do love to hate. Um, okay, and I'm gonna move us back to this view for now, just because. Oh, no, that one. Oh, hold on. Let me update this view. Uh, not solo layout, edit layout. By the way, um, if I should be using, because uh, I, I think this is the, the system PHP. If there's another version of PHP I should be using, do let me know. Is no, the latest version that I'm using? Yeah, uh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the eight, latest version, okay. 8.3. Uh, I'm just trying to find, why can't I add you? How do I add? Oh, add item. There we go. Add camera slot. There you are. And now let's get you over here again. I just realized that we were over top of the command line. And I was like, that's not a good place to be. All right. And save. There we go. Update layout. Spectacular. There we go. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could you could do PHPN, but I think you're fine with 8.3.2. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, uh, I have everything, I think can go back to here so yeah you should be good uh, so should i do is this how you install require or do i need to create a project how do you create a uh project? yeah so that that'll create the project but you can do you want to install the cli and do it through the cli uh sure so i think if you go back up to uh yeah how about use, i just go back so here use the least oh CLI. there we go optionally install yeah optionally install leaf cli it's like third step under te technical requirements Yeah, so I wonder if that tells you how to install it. Oh yeah, there we go, Composer Global. There you go. Uh, can you see this okay? Yeah, uh, that's I can better. make it that's slightly better. bigger. That's awesome. There we go. 
Ah, look at that. Composer two. So I used to, I ran composer one for a long time and it was like, uh, it was like homebrew, just like that super, super, <coughs> super slow process, but composer two, it's just fast. All right. So that's installed. <coughs> okay. And I guess we'll check to see if it's in my environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think that worked. Hmm. Wait, oh, did I do leaves? Oh, hold on. We got command not found. So we got an actual error walk through there. Did you see it? Just below leaf version in the docs. It says if you get a command not found leaf error. Oh, it didn't add it? I thought it would have added it to my... Okay, fine. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> We're going to add this here. It's there. I mean, I think it gives you actual instructions adding composer bin to path um, below this one. Yeah. 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 Um, I have a, a file for that. Cool. <clears throat> and sorry, I'm going to have a lot of mistypes. This is a new keyboard. Like, I wasn't like. All good. <laughs> it's literally a new keyboard. I'm going to make this small just in case there's anything. Yeah. I wanna... Yeah, I hear you there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm glad I did. I have secret keys in there. There it is. All right. So here, I'll go ahead and export uh, that new thing. It's weird copying. It's copying two lines for some reason. <clears throat> All right. So for those of you who are maybe watching, um, I am editing my environment for my shell. Uh, I have things that I probably shouldn't have in there. You know, we all do. We uh, all so do. I didn't want to share it with y'all, you know. So you can forgive me. If if not, it's okay. It's fine. All right. So we got to reload. Look at that. Hey, there we go. So we nice. got leaf action now. So we'll get that back up. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. So now what do we I do? Back to the docs and then go back. I think we're going to need to get out of this. The do I will say the documentation navigation for a leaf is sometimes a little bit challenging. So. Um, but I think back to back to the installation section. There we go. All right, and then here we go. So I think it's leaf leaf create, and then just choose the the name. And I don't think we need to have the custom flag because that would allow you to set custom things to be installed. Yeah, I wasn't going to do that because well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll just leave it alone. Yeah. Uh, now, will it create the directory for me or do I need to create it myself? So if you don't create the directory, I think it will for you. But I mean, it's how much of a risk do you want to take? Right, well, we'll put it in my random for now. <laughs> there you go. All right, so we'll do leaf create. What are we calling this? What are we creating? Uh, we're, so this is going to be the, like, we're going to do, just call it demo. I think that's good for this one. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this is really cool. This is what I really like. So leaf, get the first option, gives you, like, base, base, base. No fuss, no muss. Nothing is really there. It's just like the base model. One gives you an MVC model. So like if you've ever done that model view controller setup for an application, which is really big, obviously in this space, it'll give you like the skeleton for that. And then number two will set you up for actually like an API. So if you want to just get a really basic API going. Um, so yeah, choose, choose whichever one you want. Cause I feel like this is like a little bit of an exploration. <clears throat> 
Okay, so I do know that none of these will actually be what we will want initially. No. Uh, we'll go hey, casual economist. I hope you're having a great day oh. so far. He's back. Hello. How are you? I don't. Well, I, you see more. I don't see anything. I. Just, it's a tiny. It's a tiny screen for me. That's what I see. I'll just put it up on the screen. Saying hello. I'm watching all the chat stuff. All right. So which one did you do? Did you just do the basic one? Or yeah, did I did do... the basic one. Nice. No, uh, I feel like the best thing to do when you don't know something is to do the easiest thing first. Oh, that there was fast. Go. The server started that fast. It's really, really fast. Oh, but it wasn't found. Okay. That's why. Uh, but I think that might be a... Oh, you know why? Are you... Did you CD into demo? <laughs> Of course not. That would make too much sense. Hey, we got there. Okay, now refresh that page. It should be working. Yeah. Hey, we got there. Oh, yeah, so it's it's not like it's. Oh, I see. Okay, I think I see. It's it's static <laughs> file serving. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's basically running PHP like the 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 really simple like localhost setup. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess we'll open up another one of these demo. So it's out of there. There's this index. All right. So I guess the thing that we're going to eventually do is going to live in vendor, maybe. Yeah. I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah. Will it be in composer or will it be a like a directory like this? It'll it will end up doing a directory when we're building out these extend. I actually don't know because I've never built a module. I'm assuming, but I don't know. So okay. we'll actually have to go and look at the structure, but I think it's going to eventually live inside of the vendor. If you go into, yeah, that vendor folder and then leafs, uh, and then that one is, so the leafs is all of the different um, modules that have been built. So like, this is basically what we're going to be building is something that would live inside of here. Okay. So like the router, the form, the HTTP stuff, like all of those are individual modules. Like they've really done a great job of modularizing this stuff. Okay. Let's see. And there you go. So look at that. Even some, uh, um, it's strictly typed, which is not a thing that you see in this world very often. Wait, wait, where do you see types? Go at oh. the very, very top, declare strict type. <clears throat> Oh, okay. Yeah. Where so, are the types? Uh, so I don't know. I think either one equals turn it off or one equals turn it on. I'm not sure. It may mean inside of the router you have to declare types. Um, this is I, I, I'm not 100% sure how this entire thing works. Mm. Yeah, this mm. is why we don't like magic numbers. <laughs> that right there. It's like, what does one mean? It's like, oh, no one knows. Okay. Um, well, I guess... It, we figured out PHP much faster than I thought. So I guess let's figure out what we're going to need to do. Well, to... I mean, let, let's look at the actual file structure first. So like, why don't you pull up the, like pull up the actual, not the modules inside, but the actual like application. Cool. <clears throat> let's make this a little bit bigger. So like, the file structure here for anybody that's new to PHP and has never touched it before. Casual contest, my trip was um really good, but I got sick. Um, I got sick from somebody on the train. Um, so I'm slowly recovering and coughing a little bit on stream, and I apologize <laughs> as I cough live on stream. Um, yeah, and also, so I don't know if you're seeing this, but um, casual contest just saying a salute to Will. I haven't seen him on stream lately. It's true. Oh yeah, my camera actually. Uh, so I actually had to get my camera fixed last night. I stayed up very late last night. To try oh, to... Will, thank you. I, well, I saw this. I saw it. I was like, oh shit, I have a, a stream tonight. <laughs> so I was like, I better get this figured out. Uh, I installed the new uh, Sony version three firmware oh, okay. on my on my camera, and it was it was a two part process. But I didn't read it. Apparently they told you that you're going to lose all your like all your settings and all that stuff. Well, let's just say when I turned on my camera, like it wasn't. I thought it wasn't working. I thought I bricked my camera for a day. Oh no! Turns out it was working. It's just that because my settings were reset, 
uh, it will only display out of one output at once. So it was displaying out of the HDMI, except uh, it wasn't actually doing it because you know the settings weren't. I needed to go in and finish the settings. So I didn't know it. So I just thought the camera wasn't coming on. Anyways, long story short, short. Um, all of my settings are, are broken and I had to go and redo them. They're fixed now, which is why you can see me. But <laughs> so oh, yeah, I was pissed off. I was like, I'm not about to stream. Oh my god. Well, that's fair. Well, I'm glad you got it sorted out. I'm glad that it all did ultimately work out and that we can do this today because I would have been very sad. <clears throat> well, I mean, if we we, we would have been able to do it. You just would have had to watch me on my Mac Studios camera or some one of the other cameras that's not good <laughs> yeah. so it's like i would have been okay it's you <laughs> you I may not have yeah you would have had to uh, suffer to it fair enough um yeah so uh that well thanks for the context thanks for being here casual economist um and uh yeah so if you're new um just an overview of this so composer similar to npm or whatever other package manager that you're used to using um so normally you would have like a, a package.json file here we have a composer.json file and a composer.lock file instead of our node modules folder we have a vendor folder um and uh and then of course some things that you probably should recognize but maybe not is just our index.php file <clears throat> and uh, that welcome.html file, and then our HD access file. An HD access file um, really is just for your PHP server, and you can set some conditions. So, like if you're ever running, I don't know, and you want to lock out anybody with IP addresses from a specific area in the world, you can set up like rewrite rules to um, to do that in here. But what we're basically doing here is saying that in this server, go and look for the index.php and convert that to your root is basically what it's doing here. <clears throat> I think it's saying hide the file names. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'm trying to think if I've ever used this, like I think Nginx art is a little bit different. Yeah, it is. And uh, I, this depends on what HTTP server you're using the host, right? So if you're yeah. not using, okay, all right. Yeah, if you're not using Apache, you probably never touch an HD access file. Uh, that's what, okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. I was like, what service? I was thinking that it's, I haven't used, okay. All right. Yeah. So we have our index. Uh, I do have to, I do have to take a little bit of, um, of a minute to have a little bit of a jab here. We have semicolons. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have semicolons. We definitely have semicolons. I haven't had to type a semicolon. I, and, I love and it. I don't know how long wait you love you love it you love so uh, the thing that I really enjoy about PHP I don't love semicolons because I don't like JavaScript semicolons they really annoy me but in PHP they just seem right <laughs> wait what <laughs> I don't I don't I don't enjoy JavaScript's use of semicolons I feel like it relies too heavily on them for everything I know this makes no sense it's the same fucking semicolon okay. um, <laughs> All right. Well, oh, okay. Fine. Yeah. That is fine. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And so, yeah, what's going on in here? So PHP has some idiosyncrasies. Basically, you have to open whatever your main index file there is in line one with this, like, um, the, uh, the um, pointy bracket uh dollar sign or question mark php that's how you have to kind of start all the php files it basically says like this php file is a php file um otherwise it won't work um you generally don't have to close it in most of the applications it's just like in whatever your first um whatever your first file is in order for it to recognize it as php you have to kind of put that um uh indication there um that require Auto load stuff is so it actually goes in and will read things from that vendor folder. So if you click on that uh, auto load.php file, will <clears throat> auto load? Okay, yeah, yeah that was the thing I was just on. Yeah, just in composer. It's is it in composer? Yeah. Uh oh no, where is no, it? It should wait. It disappeared. What the hell? <laughs> oh, it was maybe just there. Maybe because you clicked it, like it actually went to it. Oh yeah, so it's in vendor leafs. That's why. Um, 
Yeah. So this is basically uh in no, no, that's that's that can't be it. It says right here it's in vendor auto load. Next. I swear it, it literally disappeared. Is it supposed to? Did I accidentally delete something? You saw that, right? Like I did. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that it was there, and I was like, "Oh, Will's." Will's I'm already glad. I'm ahead. glad that you saw that because sometimes these things happen, and I tell people, and they don't believe me, and I'm like, "I'll try to prove it," and of course, it works. Okay, uh, that's, that's really interesting. Let's see if this was a Git repo. <laughs> Hopefully, it is. No, it's not. I mean, I think it should be. I mean, you can run it again, or we can just see what happens. Um, there should be if you could add some extensions if you want to have some extensions for PHP, like there's IntelliFence and like some follow through. But uh... okay, can, okay, let me do that. Yeah. So this... yeah, I think that top one. And maybe this it's got eleven point two million. Yeah, and then it, Intel IntelliFence is good. It'll add like an extra layer of IntelliSense. <clears throat> okay. And I actually don't know if Leaf PHP has any extensions. I wonder. All right, let me close this, and we're gonna. We're going to, like, do this again. <laughs> yeah, let's see if it's there. <clears throat> so if we look in vendor, yeah, it's not there. All right, cool. So let's let's delete this. And what is it? Leaf create? Yeah. Yeah, zero. And what was it? Uh, vendor. There you yeah, are. There Look is. at that. It's there. So weird. That is interesting. Okay. Well, we have it again. We, we're, we're back. It deleted. I love that it deleted in real time, too. <laughs> uh, like yeah, that was interesting. We just when we needed it. <clears throat> well, fortunately, it's easy to, to get started again. And it gave us time to install some of that stuff. Yeah, so if you go now, so we've got that vendor auto load. Um, so if we go look at that, you'll see what that's all about. Can Does it I actually? Wait. No, all right, well, that's fine. Ugh. Uh, yeah, so basically this is just like ensuring that PHP is running and then it's going to just allow you to use anything that's showing up in that vendor folder. If you don't have it there, you would just have to like, reference all of them directly but it just allows for you to have like some more short code access to get into those vendor folders now um, you can just kind of reference them in in like use statements and stuff okay okay yeah. um yeah so back to the index.php i see uh, that it's is getting this welcome page html so it's just like a template or they're just serving this up just straight yeah, up they're, raw they're just serving it straight up but okay. you can they have a couple of options if you want to start using templates like you can use i think twig and and blade and stuff uh, but yeah this is literally the entire application which i kind of love it's super simple really clean readable code that makes sense it's one of the things that i and like so few folders in your actual vendor folder. Like, there's nothing. This is such a light app. Well, to be fair, it, it doesn't do anything. So, <laughs> uh, so True. like, there, there's no data being hydrated on this on this page on the server. How would I do that? Like, how would we do uh, that? yeah? So, um, we're gonna need to use a because I don't think with this setup without having a template, you're gonna be able to feed that stuff through. So, let's go back over to the leaf docs and, um and see if we can add a templating setup. Well, actually, so. well, actually, I don't oh, think Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. You can do just in pure PHP. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, I was going to say I don't even know if we have to we we don't. We don't we don't have to do it. Um nope. let let let's let's figure out the bare minimum. Let let's get something. Let's build our first plugin. Let's get something where like at least we're we're, we're getting page data. We can print it out. How about that? 
I think sure. that's a good first step, Mike. Great. Uh, right. Here, hold on, let me let me go to the here. <clears throat> so, wait, where's the? Yeah. So you you basically just want to like define something in that route and then feed it through to the page. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Basically, like build in our our hooking point, our starting point. Okay, great. I mean, if we want to do something really simple, just declare a variable inside of the function. So just like right above line six, just create a new variable, and they start with um they start with um uh, dollar sign symbols, <clears throat> and then just call it whatever you want. Great. And then you should be able now to uh, call that in that welcome.html file if you declare PHP like inside of that welcome.html. I don't, yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. Um, I declare PHP in the welcome page. So, like, in you can, uh, so you can use, um, you can, oh, maybe that's just in a templating language. Like, you can call php inside of an html file how do you call hold on i have a i have an example of this uh, okay so in but is it in a public is it in a php file dutch label index styles okay yeah so they're calling it there mm. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to work. Um, where are we calling it here? Uh, user data. Sorry, I'm just looking through another example that I have here. Oh, no, that might work. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> go to your uh, HTML file. <clears throat> Uh, Back in okay. VS Code. Uh, yeah, go into the welcome.html. And then what I want you to do is wherever you want to put that test variable to show up. Okay. Uh, so you'll do um, like the uh, um, greater than symbol or less than symbol. Yeah, that one with a question mark or with a question mark. And then equals. And then do a space. And then do the test variable, and then close that with just a uh, with a dollar sign. Yeah. Oh, just just the dollar sign. Okay. Or sorry, question mark. Jesus, I'm getting my symbols mixed up. You were right the first time. Yeah, and yes, perfect. So save that. Save the index.php, and I think that that should show that in your code. Wait, where is this running from? Oh, it's not running. <laughs> that explains it. Was it leaf serve or something like that? Yes. Yeah. And if I'm wrong, then we'll see an error here. Yeah, and we do see an error. <clears throat> Undefined variable test. Okay. So um, define that variable by doing, uh, I think you can use compact here. So go where you have page dot slash welcome HTML and do a comma after the, um, the second quotation and then do compact. Yeah. Uh, as a string? Uh, yep. Okay. Why does it see this as an array? It says that it's expecting an int. Can you not compact? Mm, that seems odd. I, I don't mean, have PHP docs. What? No, no, no. It's, uh, so it, it's just a way to pass variables through. See if it works, though. I'm curious to see if the, it works. It's just the right definition uh, where it uh, like creates an array containing variables and their values. Oh, it's, is it different? Do do instead of this, do do um the test but not test in oh no, no, this should be right. Oh also oh it's because it's only one and you're not do yes, okay. I know what it is. It's because it's expecting you to put in multiple variables, and I guess you can't do it with only one. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> we can do this. Test and test two. 
that still throwing the error? Yeah. Okay. Um, interesting. Uh, PHP docs. This might be a Leaf PHP specific thing. Um, ecosystem docs guide basics requests. Da, 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 da. How do you feed through data? Data, data, data. <laughs> Basic routing, response, important points, user, get user. How do you feed that through to there? User, request get user, post, delete. Uh, <clears throat> name user form oh, okay i get it now i know what we're i think i know what we need to do here um just do uh go back to where you have it as compact in there so and away. just and no no just remove it and just have test so no compact just test in the yeah no 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 sorry just like literally just the test oh, okay i see yeah and I think that might actually solve it. Yeah. And just remove the other one. This might not work, but we'll see. See if it still throws the air. Probably will. Yeah. Still a thing. Mm, let's take string given. Yeah. So this is a specific to leaf routing stuff. Yeah, so, so that would be in their their reference. Or at least. Yeah, yeah, there's like a basic routing thing. Uh, if you go, it's like under the basics, there's a routing and then basic routing. Ooh, where? Um, go back to- I like to, yeah. to hear. I think it's guide, yeah. Oh, the basics. Oh, and then yeah. routing, I see. Yeah, response JSON name leaf, and JSON title creating routes. Maybe you can't pass that data. I uh, feel you definitely can because I've done it before, but I've done it. I thought I did it that way. But I feel like I've. They, 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 you you definitely can you definitely can pass it through. Because like they're showing how to do it using a name movies function. Get movies, user movies, uh, app, get route, route name, route sub patterns, front end. Uh, do I have a leaf example? I have a leaf example that I built for something else. Then I know I did this in it, but I did it with the MVC. Uh, leaf PHP dev cycle labs. There we go. Uh, okay, app, and we're in view, uh, we're not views, we're in controllers, controller, no, we were in routes, routes, index, no, app. Okay, so do you find it there? Render, index. Oh, by the way, I think that we may have went in like down the wrong path. We probably should be uh, working in the clone of the repo. Given Shoot. that we're we're contributing, we're we're going to actually contrib uh, con contribute something to them. So uh, I'm looking at here on the, at their contribution guide, and we're supposed to clone their repo and run leaf install there. That makes and, sense, but we're good. So the way the the way that we're contributing is different. We're not contributing to core. We're going to develop a separate extension. Like we're going to do the separate module. So this is like if we were contributing to core or one of the existing extensions. Okay. Oh, do you like, do you know of an existing mm -hmm. extension? Oh yeah, yeah. You can find them on their on their um, Laravel page. Uh, hold on. I want to. I want to. I want to solve this problem first, though, because I so I found my example. So okay. go back to hold on. Let me let me screen share for a second so that I can 
Um, do I have to stop? Oh yeah. No, 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 no. You don't, you don't actually need to stop at all. Oops. I could have, no, no, you're good. I could have done it, but so here is, um, share screen, share screen, entire screen, that one. Okay. So here's my example that I did. And this is like one where I've actually done the MVC model, but so you define your variable here and then you feed it through. Is it render in yours as well? Do you have render and then that the welcome.html? Or what does it say for yours? I have response with that has a page. Try this format that I've got here. Do you see this? I don't know if you can actually see it. I'll just yeah, it a little bit. Uh, give me a second. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, and then uh, if you want to share again, then I'll put yours back up. <clears throat> uh, what is that dev cycle like? What? Okay, never mind. Uh, let me share. Let me share. There we go. All right. Uh, yeah. I didn't get a chance to to finish. Uh, yours had like this this thing right here. Yeah. It? Yeah. And then you're basically doing. Uh, so you're gonna do like name the variable that you want to use in the blade, and then you're basically gonna call the variable that you defined in inside of that route. If that makes sense. Uh, yes. So yeah. Do this. Other, other way around. Okay. And then inside of the quotes. So you're going to move the second of your square brackets to outside the whole, this whole thing. So put it on the outside of test. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. And then you're going to do what you have here. So go um, quotation mark test. And then on the other side, remove the quotation marks around. Yeah, perfect. So forget about render and put it back to what it was before. Um, Cause I guess render is a separate MVC thing. It should work either way. Yeah, and expected type int found string why do we keep getting the same oh there right there it says it uh you give it the string and then it expects the integer that's the second one uh there doesn't seem to be a function where you can pass the data so you, you can't at least not with this page okay so then that means that there must be uh, so this, yeah, so this, like, like I said, the base model. So there is probably a way to do it if we jump back into their docs. So let me, let me do that now. Um, this could be it here. I see markup, there's ah. page, you can send, you could do, I guess you can send it as cookies. You can do it. Yeah, I guess you could do it. Page plane. What's markup? I remember. Let's see if it's documented. Uh. Not really sure, but it's a string. <laughs> it takes a string. And uh, yeah, it just takes markup and a code. Not really sure what that means, but OK. All right. Well, now we know that at least this particular thing doesn't do it, but that's OK, I think. I mean, it's it's fine. I was I was mostly just curious. I know I want to I want to know why. It's not working though. Front end. Where's my leaf blade? Bear UI. Do we get it with the bear UI? Config render. Okay. So go to go back to the docs. Um and then go to the front end section in the docs. Uh in like the docs guide. And then front end just under digging deeper and then like the introduction one there. Oh, the introduction. Okay. Yeah, the introduction. So 
basically, I guess you are not able to, yeah, I, I guess you're, you really aren't able to do that into any kind of templating without using one of these three engines. Gotcha. Okay. So, all right, you pick one of the templating languages that does what you need. It seems like Veins is the one that they're recommending. <laughs> it, they would seem that way. Okay. All right. Well, uh, now what? What? Yeah. Now? What now? Okay. So let's go look at a plugin that exists already. So we know we know that this is here. Awesome. Let's go look at a an example of another plugin. So if we go to their um, if we go to their GitHub. Um, we can see, just go into like the main org. Um, and then there's a bunch of examples that are in here. Basically all of the mini repos that you see here are all of their modules. So can you make that a little bit bigger? Yeah. So like these, the router, um, I don't think the fetch thing is, and the Hannah one is not one of theirs, but like, yeah, the auth module, um, the mail module, the D the database module, like these are all examples of how they separate out the functionality into modules. Technically, even that bare UI thing or the, or the veins that we were looking at is technically a module that we could look at to see how it works. Cause it'll all be very similar. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, well, I guess let's take a look at auth. <coughs> Okay, so I guess we're going to have to have a folder called auth with core, or I guess whatever files we want, I'm yeah. going to assume. Helpers, okay, <laughs> same structure. So I noticed that this file is the same as this folder, so I'm assuming it has to be the same. Let's see. Uh, least simple. Yep. Yep. So we're going to have to have one of these. And it needs to extend core? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like, I guess we need to have static functions, I'm assuming. I really don't know. All right. And I guess these functions are just functions. Well, I wonder why they're on in another file. Like, does it, does it matter? Does the location of a file matter in PHP? Mm, it doesn't. It's more, I think, just the format that like they're trying to follow a very specific format. There is a, I think there's actually in the docs, there's like a section that talks about modules and contributing to modules. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, we should look at some uh, another, maybe another module to get a, to get an idea because maybe that'll define okay. what's, because maybe they're not all being following the same format. Right. I have a question though. What mm. is this right here? This slash. So, uh, in PHP, you so that's basically telling it to go look in that specific folder. You could also just do a use statement at the very top and define that, and then you would just be able to call config. I don't know why they're doing it that way. Um, I guess it's because they don't know where that's the the leaf config is going to be located. So they're assuming that you're installing this at the root so that you can find it. Um, it's it's just to define where you're looking for the leaf core files. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's look at another, another one of these. Uh, which one should I pick? Yeah. Maybe, maybe the Redis one. Redis. Do you hear they've relicensed Redis by the way? Yeah. I heard. Yeah. I heard. <laughs> People were upset about it. They were indeed. The internet gets upset about a lot of things and then look in the, yeah. So, I'm just looking at the composer yeah, just yeah. to see like if there's anything interesting. Uh, nope. Yeah, so it looks like all that stuff is not necessary. Well, this is a constant though, this name. Yeah, yeah, yeah but there's this no class, yeah. But it looks like the folder structure is not necessary because right. we had last time around we had a redis.php file and then we had a redis folder and it looks like we did not or an auth.php and then an auth folder. 
right yeah everything is happening in the um in the the file that's named after the whatever you know the yeah. integration so yeah i see that's happening here this config this is all being brought in from the other stuff i think yeah and this init function this last right okay so these are that we define our own so these static functions are things that we define and i'm noticing that all of these are static so far so i'm going to assume that anything that's inside of this class needs to be static based off of the two things <laughs> i think I, th I think you're probably you're probably on the right track i that's a good question i have absolutely no idea but i have a feeling you're right all right well let's go look at the you said that there's a doc for i thought there was i don't it's not easy to find but if you search for modules i think there'll be something about modules yeah that's it It may just be, I don't know if this actually tells you how to build one or if it's just how do you install it. Yes, yeah, so this is literally just telling you how to install them. It's not telling you how to contribute to them. But you were looking in the contributing section. Was there anything in there? Um, Not. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. That's really bright. <laughs> uh, not that I remember. I'm checking. Let's just go look. So yeah, it was just like install this. So I was hoping that maybe there would be more information in the in the repo in the readme. So I'll go yeah. and look there in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have the project structure for for things, but then there's nothing else. Okay, well, good to know. And but, it looks like there I mean, hasn't been, there hasn't been very many third party extensions developed for this framework either. So. I think this may actually be like the first time that anybody's actually taken the time to develop a third party plugin. We don't know if it's possible. I know it's possible. It's definitely, okay. I mean, they're, they're pulling in Redis, right? So it's definitely possible to do. Okay. Um, and like, even if you can't install it through, like you, you can always edit your composer.json file to pull in like a fake package that you're developing yourself. Um, so yeah, it's a hundred percent possible. Okay. Well, I guess that's what we're going to, we're going to have to figure it out. I was, the reason why I asked, I was like, well, if it's not possible, we'll just do Laravel because you said they're kind of the same. They are. I, I don't know. I really like the fact that this is here and it doesn't, I, I want us to start a trend. I want us to make this the popular framework. Laravel's got a lot of love already. But I feel like there's probably some stuff that we can pull from. Uh, so, even well, we that's, that's what I'm getting at, right? Because like, yeah. if, if this, if what you're saying is true, uh, and they in fact basically have, let's say, borrowed, borrowed, <laughs> uh, they were inspired by uh, by Laravel. Then I assume that if we're able to get the stuff done for Laravel, then like it'll be obvious. Yeah, I mean, to be but, honest yeah. with you, there may in fact even be a if we go to GitHub one signal Laravel. Uh, I think there was. Uh, it's not one that we made. Uh, I can, I can, I can be for sure for that one. Uh, but I'm yeah. going to do say leaf and then uh, plugin. Maybe just filter by PHP. Yeah. <laughs> Grav plugins. October CMS plugins. Yeah, so it definitely does not look like there's any plugins, any third-party plugins that have been developed. Well, I can go either way. I No, don't. no, I I think like let's look for inspiration. Let's do what they did. Let's look for inspiration in Laravel and then let's do let let's do let's build this one signal integration for them and then let's build a dev cycle integration for them. I think there's something powerful there. <laughs> But yeah, Laravel one signal. Um, you're like, I've, you're like, I've already got my PHP development environment set up. Why not try this? Give it a try. They're super smooth to get set up. Uh, I was, I'm mostly, I'm looking for their developer docs. So, oh, like, this is their developer docs. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, all of it is uh, their developer docs for creating uh, a plugin. 
Oh, for creating plugins? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they have... I don't know. Because essentially, I was going to use their docs to do oh. it. Because <laughs> if they're the same, then they're, you know, they're the same. Yeah, let me see. I feel like they must have it, actually. Laravel extensions. Uh, extending the framework. Let me see if they have a version for 11. Uh, oh, they actually got rid of the extending plugin. Uh, Laravel plugin packages. Packages. No, that's not what we're looking for. Plugins. Interesting. Uh, they don't actually have any documentation for developing plugins. Oh <laughs> that's wild, right. considering how many plugins that they hold on. There's got to be like a Laravel plugin starter kit or Laravel package, not package. Wow, that's so funny. I had no idea <laughs> that they didn't have one. Building a Laravel package. Building your own Laravel package. Uh, package development. Oh, there is. Oh, yes, there is. It is there. It's just hidden. Uh, let me share this in Slack. Uh, uh, <clears throat> just a little bit harder to find. Is it? Oh, okay. Wait. Okay, I think I found. It. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. This. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay, I was just on that page. <laughs> Interestingly. Uh, okay. Yeah, package discovery. I don't see creation though. No, I don't Maybe even service know. providers. I don't think that they actually provide um, a base format. It's funny now that I think about it. I've seen lots of different formats. Uh, building your own Laravel news. Yeah, there's like a bunch. There's a guide from like one of the major. Well, let me share this. Mm -hmm. This is, that's, this is a very interesting point. It's like you want people to contribute to your community, but. Yeah, uh, I mean, I can. It's it's hard. It is. <laughs> it's, all, it's, all, it's hard. It is. But I don't honestly know if we're going to get anything more out of this than we are out of the out of just like looking at a couple of packages for hold on let me see if there's any the redis package is a good one but we need one that's actually going to do a call um let's go laravel uh oh, no not laravel leaf php github all right bum bum and ecosystem community contribute to leaf github Okay, and then here, and fetch docs, CLI, mailer module. What else do we got here? Um, DB, no, router, no, blade, no, CSRF, no, testing library, no, simple console, file system, Redis, inertia, feature requests, <coughs> anchor, Router, Dev Tools, Logger, Bear UI, Sandbox, Skeleton, Demos, Watcher, Cores Module. Oh, Experimental Modules. Those are cool. What are these? I'll, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab some. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're all good. So I'm just looking on folks that are watching. Um, I'm going to pull this over. So I just was peeking through the, um, 
I'm just peeking through the GitHub for Leaf PHP and looking at the different modules that they have here. And then I just came across this like experimental modules um, folder. So we've got like, this anchor stuff, vein support, uh, Tilly helpers, whatever, experimental modules, password help helper module, cores. I feel like this experimental one here, the collection of upcoming modules, move to main repo. Are you sharing your screen? Yeah, I'm just sharing my screen right oh, now. Okay, I, pulled, okay. I, pulled, I, pulled, I pulled yours off. So okay. token, uh, leap token, some way to create tokens. Yeah, it looks like you're pretty open. You're pretty open to use whatever setup way that you or like whatever kind of format for these because these are two experimental modules like this encryption one and they don't even have any additional folder structure so yeah the only mandatory file in here is literally just the um is literally just this token.php a class that that yeah. implements yeah that exactly thing. yeah so do, do we want to try today we're like hour and a half in or do we want to just like yeah how far do you want to get um well can you scroll up let me yeah. i'm not sure how far we can get first let me let me check that namespace leaf experiments it's the is that is that what we're going to name is that what we name our thing is it like does that make sense oh that's a good question uh leaf experiment oh, that's what they call their thing so see that online too Oh yeah, they're defining it down here too. But yes, yes, they are. No, this is different because this is Leaf Experimental. Oh, oh, you're right, my bad. But then they are defining it down here under the auto load. They're defining that as the source. Experimental modules, source. Oh, that makes sense. So yeah, in Composer, they're basically saying this source folder should be known as Leaf Experiments. So it's just defined here. What's PS? Or PSR dash four. That's a good question. Let's see what that is. What's PSR dash four? Um, auto loading classes. Uh, PSR describes spec for auto loading classes from file paths. Fully operable and can be used. Uh, PSR oh, describes version. Seems like yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I think we'll just have to define that here. I, I think. I mean, I think we can do this. Okay. Uh, but I would say let's get, um, let's get a templating thing set up. Let's put, let's get vein set up in that base project. Okay. And then maybe we'll just get the file. I'll, I'll let you go back over to yours. Um, so maybe we should just get that veins thing set up in the sample project that we're working on for the demo. And then we can create a new folder for that's like get version controlled for actually developing our one signal extension. Okay, so um, this compose install, right? Uh, composer, just... compo composer install. Oh, composer. Okay. Yeah. And, and then it should try just veins. Yeah. Like that? Yeah, let's try it. Oh, no. Hold on. Uh, bear oh, you wait, on. Wait. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, leaf install veins. Leaf install veins. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, I, I, I think I have a watch command on here. Basically, I want to see what it's going to do. So let me oh, make this a, a repo first. How about that? <clears throat> Wait, what? I, any idea why that didn't work? No idea whatsoever. Oh, this is an old window. It doesn't actually know that the demo is there because you deleted it when you had this in there. Just CD, but yeah, and then go back in. Should work. Okay, perfect. So we'll just add everything. I don't care. <laughs> okay.
All right, I added a few things. All right, Got so it, the lock file updated. Mm -hmm. This PS4 up whatever thing is added. Yeah, that, at least. that that auto loader. So basically, we're saying like add that auto loader so that we can use it in our application. Okay. Oh, it's loading it based off a of hash. Okay, so it's content based loading. I like that, by the way. That's an awesome watcher. What's that? The, just the what you've done here. Like, I love that idea of being able to see it in a detailed way instead of just calling a CLI command and not knowing what happened. Oh, oh, oh! Actually, I, I just I didn't <laughs> run it as a watch. Uh, after I was like, oh, let me just make it a Git repo. And oh, so we're we're doing oh. the, uh, between what's here now and what was the last commit, which was that. Everything. I see. I see. I was like super impressed by this watch command, which I never thought I'd ever see. Like looking something like this. Uh, no, it's just it's just get diff. But you can you can you can use you can use this with watch. You can just pipe it. So like mm -hmm. you can say, all right, watch, and then run this thing, and then always every time you make a change, do a get diff or cool. a diff. You don't even have to use get diff. Just diff. All right. This is the. All right, there's some install JSON. Okay, I think we can ignore that. There's an install PHP, which is updated. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be much. That's it. So much nice. It. It's pretty light. Um, okay, so yeah, so we've got that in there now. And so let's go and actually get that test variable that we put in there working. So changes here, back to the docs, and let's go... I mean, I can tell you what we're doing here, or you can look at the docs on your screen. Uh, let me first get to the docs. Yeah, and then basically we'll need to pull up the veins, leaf veins. Uh, it's just under, yeah, docs. So this is the one thing I don't like about the docs, right? There's a lot of navigation to get where you're trying to go. And then it's just under front end, like scroll down to almost the very bottom. Yeah, and then veins. Yeah. So we got that in there. So now at the top of the file, we're going to need to do that attach leaf veins class so we can use veins within the application. At the literal top uh, or? Uh, it should be just, I think it's just under require. Oh. Should be fine. Oh, under, okay. All right. I think, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, we just need to, under, instead of response, it'll be um, app. Yeah, we can actually. Wait. Uh... Oh, you might need to scroll down a little bit further to see exactly what this is going to look like. What do you mean? Uh, in the docs. Oh, just okay. Make, yeah. Just keep scrolling. Scroll in. And then I think it's like rendering your views. There's a section that's rendering your views. Okay. Uh, so, oh, okay. So it can't be an HTML anymore. Yeah. I think you just need to call it just welcome. Uh, no, nah, veins. Dot HTML. I have no idea what you're doing right now. Oh, I see. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. And then we just need to change that welcome.html in the render to just welcome. And I think it's just welcome. Oh, not even a slash? I don't think so. Scroll down and where it says rendering your views is hidden there right now. It'll show you the format. Yeah, there you go. And then I think for, def well, we'll see if defining the variable works. I think that should be fine without the square brackets, but let's see. Let's see uh, what happens. Okay. All right. I don't think it's going to work. I, th I think it's smart enough. He says, if it throws an error that we'll know I'm wrong. And it threw an error. Way to go, Andrew. Uh, all right. So, yeah, uh, I think, yeah, I'm going to try it, that. 
it's got to name the variable and then call. Is the this variable. a map? Is this what? Is this a? Dictionary? Yes, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. I didn't know the name of it, but yes, that's exactly what it is. <clears throat> so then, let me go back to here. How was this? Yeah, that should work. Template file not found. HTML. Yeah, that's a much better error. Welcome.bane.html. I think it okay. expects this. It has a convention. This is what, whatever this new thing is. Oh, you're right. Yes, yes, yes. But where is the file structure now? Oh, you actually have to define it. Hold on. Uh, go up in the docs. You actually add this in as a config. Uh, the so way go, the docs. go back to the docs. Oh, this docs. Okay. Yeah, that docs. Scroll up uh, where it says configuration. There you go. Scroll down. So like here, this is what you basically need to find the template directory. Okay. And then a cache directory. Yeah. And then we'll just create a views folder. I did. It's here. Oh, sick. Yeah, so that should be that should work fine. Trying to get property of non-object. Uh Yeah, this oh. other one is like this, so maybe because they assume that there's a variable defined and I yeah. don't have one. Yeah, that's good. That's a strong assumption though. <laughs> it's weird. Uh it's weird. Oh, it's because they talk about usage. So they show that immediately after they talk about um, usage without actually using leaf because you can use veins without actually using leaf. You could just use it in a generic PHP project. Mm. So that's they've done that and then they just haven't gone back to calling it through the app. So that that actually makes sense. So we did this, this attach here. So that this should have been this should have been all we needed to do. Uh, okay, so this should be working now. The app I mean, should be working. We should be getting no more errors. It's definitely not working. At least not, I mean, it didn't work last time. You know what? I, I have I have an idea. How about this? Uh, this welcome. Let's just delete all this because it's starting to confuse me. Delete all that. All right. That way we can yeah. only, we only need to see the one thing. Nothing else really matters. Is that and that file is in there? Template file not found. Welcome wait, hold on. Uh, this. Are, are, wait, am I sure this is actually the right thing? Yeah, that's right. So then go to our file structure again. What's going on? There's something that's. Saying least veins, source veins, parser. Wait, 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 template not found. Welcome views. What did I call it? Views. Yeah, that's right. Welcome veins.html. Okay, that's right. That's right. And then you renamed it veins.html. Where did it reference that? Veins. Dot. <clears throat> HTML. We'd create a file. So I'm going to create a view called homepage. We create a file homepage vein.html in the views directory. Now that is an extension for the views. So it's in the right place. Demo. Well, views, yes. Welcome veins.html. Is there anything else referenced in here? Creating our views. Template directory to views. App veins. Render. Okay, that's all good. What did what did we do? New to template? No, templating engine's fine. Cache directory is fine. In the config, we set to views. Homepage. Dot, oh, vein? Did you call it veins? It's vein, just vein. Uh. It's an okay. odd choice. Yeah, that's, okay. I don't want to say anything. 
<laughs> I was just like, uh, okay. All right, okay. different error. This is okay. Good. good. Uh, okay. Is did you? Is there a cache? Create a cache folder in there as well and make it writable. In the uh, in views. In views. In views, because it's looking for an actual cache folder. You'd think it would auto create it, but I guess it does not. I forgot what it's to be called. Is it cache? It's just cat. No, just just cache. C a c h e. Okay. Okay. Great. That's a, different. It's different. Where it's showing the page, there's not an error there. Is, is the text? Oh, it's different. it's the text set to white because the background was set to. So just change the text color, in style. Uh, okay, I was going to change the background. <laughs> Oh, I mean, you change the background. That's fine. Like whatever is easy. I don't because I don't know how to do any of this uh, background color. Wait, hold on. The background color is different. It should be this color, right? But you removed. Oh, the right body. Is, the body is definitely still there, right? Did I delete the body? I don't think so. I think the body's still there. Style body. Yeah, that's all still there. I may have deleted the body. I'm pretty sure. I, no, I didn't. It's definitely here. Yeah, it's definitely here. Yeah, for mm. whatever reason, that's not working. Um, but I, I think let, let's do what you said first. Uh, you're gonna have to tell me what the what the thing is. Let's put this in a paragraph tag first. Yeah. All right. Is uh, style and then what is it? Font color. Yeah, I think so. I, I, yeah, I think it's font color. I think it gives it to you there, or just color, just color. There you go. We'll go with black. Nah, it's nope, not it's not there. What is the what does it show up if you actually? Yeah. Uh oh, look. Oh wait, no, that's irrelevant. Yeah, it's given the two hundred. Okay, so we're, getting, it's rendering. It we're getting something returning there, so that's fine. Let's go back to our is index. It, and you have, yeah, that's that's good. Veins. Hold on. Did we get that completely right? I think we must have, because it wouldn't be showing if we didn't. Rendering your views. Veins. Yeah, it's, not, it's no longer erroring. Yeah, for sure. It's, not, it's, it's no one giving us that. Okay, that's fine. Change the test, like the, the dollar sign test variable in, in, in line. Just change it to like hello world or, or something. Like instead of doing it like defining it on line 13, just actually define it on line 15. Define hello world as test. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Wonder if that'll do anything. Nope, that didn't do shit. Uh, okay. So it's now it's at least not erroring out. If we put any text in that paragraph, like go back to just the welcome vein, just put put any text in anywhere and let's see if it shows up. Yeah. I mean, sure. technically that is any text. <laughs> yeah, but, let's, yeah, let's see. I think this is a styling issue. Remove like the entire style from there. Yeah, because yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's got Tailwind set up anyways. Let's get rid of these scripts too. We don't want them. Well, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, I don't want any of these scripts. Yeah, we don't need any of that. And then that flex center all, like, we're not actually calling Tailwind in here anywhere, are we? Mm -mm. Let me just get rid of it. Simplify. <laughs> there we go. That should. Okay. S try stopping the server and starting it again, and maybe that's the issue. No, I don't think it is because I've already done that a few times. Okay, so <laughs> it's but... feeding through the right things. The cache folder is writable, and it's reading from the cache. And it's given the two hundred, so the, the actual request is, is is succeeding. It's just not rendering anything. And there's no text that's showing up there. Oh, you know what it is? What, what? if? Because remember this, we just we just turned this into a vein AC. Oh yes, yes, yes. But was there any actual change that needed yeah, to be there, made? It might be an actual template. <laughs> Maybe a template syntax. Uh, it should be it should be in here. Yeah, front end veins. 
Rating, rating reviews. reviews. There we go. Just copy that. And let's see. That looks mighty similar to what we have. It on. looks mighty similar as a good. It's going to throw an error, though, because it doesn't see name. So just change name to test. No, we're just going to change it name. We're going to change test to name. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Let me just try it. Let's try. Render. Nope. It's. It does. It does. It show. Okay. Go. Just like search, show source code. There's nothing there. It's literally a blank page. What is happening? We attached the veins class. We installed the veins class. We did app veins render. Render home name. That's right. Name leave user. We defined it right in there. Why are you not serving views, 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 cache, views, cache, welcome dot vein dot HTML. Welcome. It's just welcome that's there on our co in our code too. It's just welcome that's there. Render home. Render Here, I'm, gonna try, I'm gonna try this. Let's delete that and see what happens now. So I'll just get rid of this. Like maybe there's a runtime there preventing it from rendering. Nope. Doesn't work. So I think maybe there is something to the app that was actually defined as app then. Um, I wonder if they define that any, if they show that issue anywhere else. Bear oh, you mean like, let's do it this way? Uh, yeah, well, where we had the, with the, like in here where it was the dollar sign, but I'm just trying to figure out if they mentioned that anywhere else. No, welcome view, echo app, bar something, template render. Leaf veins. I love that they like recommend this, but it's definitely not incredibly clear. I think they you... wrote it. Yeah, well, they definitely wrote it. From here's there, what I can... think they're doing. They're doing this right here. They're doing this app equals app like that, and then they're doing app dot or whatever this is. They're doing this. So I guess effectively I could have just did this to get it to match, but that shouldn't make. I mean, that shouldn't. I don't. It shouldn't make a difference. Yeah. App veins configure. Well, to be fair, it wouldn't be a live stream if things went on track. It would not be a live stream if things worked as they should. Uh, that's very true. You're not wrong. I'm like, there's a part of me that's like, oh, I wanted this to work perfectly. But I also feel as though the setup process is always the worst. Okay. How did I do this in my previous, I d I've never done it with, um, uh, with the veins. I've always done it with blade, but I don't think even saying that, I don't think it's going to actually make a difference. App. PHP. Yeah. So there's something happening between that render stage. And it's not, it's not getting the welcome page at all with any variables. No. Nah. Um, you know what? Let me let me do a quick check. Oh, I forgot. I remapped my my key bind for opening up my terminal. It's kind of confusing me. Uh so I think. Oops. I 
I want to see if the directory that I named for the views has the right permissions on it. Mm. Because this is PHP. <coughs> so this looks like it does. Read, what about the cache? Because it's actually reading from the cache when it's when it's displaying. The cache has the same permissions. Okay. Welcome to uh, Bing.html. Read, 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 read. It also has read, write. Wait, is it is it got what's the ordering? Do you remember? I do not. All right, let's open up Finder. Oops, what did I just do? I think this shows you the order. So person, staff, everyone, uh, or group. Yeah, I think that should have worked. Yeah, that should be that yeah. should be fine. Okay, auto escape. Leave veins. Okay, veins is working. Post body. This is body. Auto escape. A lot of use cases. Rendering raw HTML. No, I don't like that. Well, if it makes you uh, to be, I mean, to be fair, none of this blocks us. Oh, no, no, no. This is the, well, it will, because we will need to use variables in our blade eventually, maybe. For uh, for dev cycle, we definitely will. So there is a little bit of a block here. Mm. Template. Oh, this means veins will look for all your views in the views folder, create a view folder called homepage. I want to know why they're naming app that way in docs. That's what really bothers me here. I think like, they, oh, I think they chose to do it stylistically. You think they're, so? Yeah, I think they're assuming that that it's an it's a variable. App veins yeah. render. I, I think it's just an assumption. I, I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't put too much into that one. MVC does MVC? I wonder if MVC ships with that app directory configuration leaf log level blade does leaf mvc ship with uh veins <clears throat> so yeah this is the thing i'm trying to figure out if there's i want to look at one that has shipped with veins to see if maybe we're just not implementing it the proper way i got it to work what how um I saw this. Remember when I was uh, when we were like, it had two different configurations. Yeah. Well, I think that one of these was if you're not using this one. So I just deleted this, and then it worked. What? Yeah. Maybe I can also do this one too. Let me just do that. Delete that. Attach, and then yeah. So it's one or the other. You can't do both. So yeah. It's a good note. If you're watching this leaf team. That's a thing to put a note in your docs about. So it works. Mm -hmm. So if you remove the app veins config stuff, it'll work. Um, well, no, now it's giving me this error saying that that this is null. So let yeah, me so put put that in, that. remove remove seven through ten. And then we'll remove this. Oops. Wait, what is that? Sorry, I'm like half eating. The no, no, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, put file contents. No such file or directory. Hmm. It's saying that there's some in this cache. Yeah, just delete the cache, delete that, and maybe that's part of the problem. Well, it's definitely building. That's the thing. It just built that. So that's actually interesting. <laughs> the fact that it built that page. Yeah, so I think you do. I think you do need that config thing. Yeah, you're probably right. Let's try that again. But then we get the other error where it says that, or we don't get an error. It's just not actually showing anything. But notice there's nothing in cache. But let's see if I refresh. It does like now, real time. Yeah, it caches it. And you know what? It may not be returning. What if I had to give a response? What if this render isn't enough? Maybe. Hold what on. If there's like a dot. Or not that like a send or something or mm. app veins, leaf veins, render home, app run. 
So leave. From there, you can use veins property on the app object to render your veins files. Do we have to call that after app run? What's that? So um, if you go, go to the docs, so you see how on line 18, we have app run. Yeah. So if you look in the docs for uh, for this leaf veins thing, and you scroll down, and then it says like using, and then it's basically saying like, um, uh, there's a section where it says usage with leaf, and it says like from there you can use the veins property on app object to render your veins files. Yeah, usage with leaf, so one step above that. Yeah, so. I wonder, does that have to run instead of run? Do you know what I mean? Mm. No, I think you have to run. Uh, run. Yeah, I, I think so too. I also... No, I, I think you do too. App, veins, render. Okay, that is 100% right. Render is exactly what we should be doing. We need the configuration stuff. What if we run the put the config stuff below? Is it maybe an order issue? Like put it below that function? Like just before run? It'd be weird, but maybe. Yeah, I don't see that being the issue. Yeah, I already rejected that. Do you have do you have another browser? Uh sure. Yeah. I doubt it, but I wonder. It's definitely so I can tell you for sure it's not the browser because we looked at the response from the server. Yeah. It is giving us 200, so uh but watch it watch this since I said it. <laughs> watch this the browser. But I doubt it. Wait, is it not gonna open? Oh, it just takes forever, okay. Nope. Same thing. I wonder if there's any errors. Leaf veins returns blank. PHP. Change log, core model, echo print. The thing is, is that I don't think it's an error. Like it seems to be working. Yeah, everything is there. I just don't know why. Yeah, like why? Why is it not displaying? That is the question. All of the things are working as they should, and yet PHP enable whether allow raw PHP and templates. Is that it? No, because we're not using raw PHP. We're using the template syntax. There's some other character set debug show. Oh, show debug errors. There's a configuration thing that's a debug in that config thing. This one? Yeah, just set do. It's a new line, uh, and then it's just called debug. And set it to true, yeah. Ah, no additional information. It's not seeing a bug. Creating yeah, I don't. I don't think that. I don't think there's a bug. Is it just our implementation of this is wrong? Uh, I can't even say that because it's not. We haven't even done an implementation. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like this. This is like the most simple. This is literally the most simple possible way. Does this have to be run in a in another space? Well, here's my idea. So for next stream, what we do, instead of using uh, veins, let's we use just... Blade, the, whatever this other one, because it seems like you know that one, you've heard of that one at least, or you use it. Bear you UI see. works fine too. Bear, Bear and Leaf have worked before. I feel like veins is new. I wonder. Well, we'll use whichever one. Uh, we'll use one that works, but yeah, we've we'll got the project. Yeah. We've got the project working. I'm gonna also play around with this on my end and see if I can figure it out. I'm gonna like spend some time this afternoon because I got another hour until the end of the day. So I'm gonna see if I can spin up a base project and see if I can figure this out. Um, 
in the meantime, but, uh, for next, okay. So we got our, we got our dev environment set up, which was our goal for this week. We actually got further than that. We got our dev environment working. We learned some things. We learned some things. We have an idea of what our module, um, structure is going to look like, which is basically a single PHP file called one signal and another one called dev cycle <coughs> and then some help, <coughs> excuse me. And then a helper function. Um, so I think we're going to get there. To be honest with you, Will, I also wonder if maybe there's some contributions that we can make to the docs having gone through this process. You know, like I feel like oh, we've hit. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't want to know. You don't want to go. We don't want to go that deep. We're going to build some stuff, not document right, it. Let's just say that, like, I have enough docs. To... <laughs> like, I've had my book for the next year or two. Fair enough. Um, but I like that. So when when should we do this again? My schedule has opened up a lot. Um, so like I could do two weeks, I could do next week. Like what is what is your what is your April look Let's like? Let's just do in in two weeks because I do plan to take some time off. Sick at, at the end of the month. So amazing. Uh, let's just do All right. two weeks. All right. Uh so we'll do it at same time. Mm -hmm. All right. Hold. Uh, Andrew was will add invitees. Will it's gonna find you. There we go. All right, seventeenth. Send. Sick. Sick. Um, I realized again. This is the second time that I've done the stream. There's been no music going in the background. I had all the power to do the music. There was one stream this time, and there was no music going in the background. Uh, I thought I just couldn't hear it. Uh, no, I it was no, nah, it was me. Uh, but that's all right. We were the music of the stream, uh, and uh, and I feel like it was it was fantastic. Uh, all right, let me bring us back over here. There, nope. There we go. Um, yeah. So if you watch the stream, we're gonna be back in two weeks. We're gonna. I think we can pr get pretty far in the next stream. I'm feeling pretty good. Will has dusted off his PHP skills this week. Um, and, uh, I feel like in two weeks, it'll be my turn to dust off my leaf, my leaf skills and see if we can, uh, see if we can get a little bit further. Yeah, it should be fun. Uh, I forgot that you, uh, access properties using, uh, a dash and a greater than symbol. Uh, I was, I was surprised to relearn that. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, PHP. You are not designed for the modern developer, but, but will convince more people to use you. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, I guess in the meantime, uh, you have a good rest of the, what week is there any holiday? Are there any holidays upcoming? No, nah, we just not? came off. I think we both just came off of, uh, the Easter holidays. So nah, we didn't, we didn't get that here. Oh no. Interesting. Nah, I, yeah, it's interesting actually, because uh, it seems like in the past we did. Yeah. But, uh, I, yeah anyway, I don't want to talk. About it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, you have a great week too. I'm excited to hear on the next stream where you're gonna take your vacation or staycation because I know travel is in your blood. So uh, yeah. Um. Until then, uh, we're signing off for now. This is Andrew and Will, the DevRel Code Laboration building some extensions contributing to the community and uh next time we'll bring some music again yeah i mean we'll be here that's all that matters we'll be here that is the important thing you're not wrong you're not wrong all right everybody have an awesome awesome rest of your day and we'll see you around the internet bye peace out